And let me tell y'all, I was already having a great day. Today was such a phenomenal day for me personally, my own personal life. Uh, but this news, it made it that much better because the Baltimore Ravens are activating Keaton Mitchell to their active roster. Again, because we know Keaton Mitchell, uh, he originally made the 53-man roster as an undrafted rookie free agent at the running back position on top of that. Like, with Keaton Mitchell... I when, when the Ravens first signed him, I didn't know anything about him. I was naive to him. But so many Ravens fans were like, hey, no, hey, this dude can play. This dude can ball. This dude will make the Baltimore Ravens roster. So many Ravens fans told me that. And I would be like, okay, I, I get the excitement, but, but chill out. R relax. But then I saw for myself. And I said, oh, oh, this is what they were talking about. Oh, I get it now. And then I was like, oh, yeah, he has to make the Ravens 53-man roster. They got to figure this thing out. Even though the Baltimore Ravens had a log jam at the running back position because they had a J.K. Dobbins, they had a Gus Edwards, they had a Justice Hill, they had a Melvin Gordon, and they still had Keaton Mitchell. So I was like, ooh, I know the Baltimore Ravens, J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards were obviously going to make it. Figured Justice Hill would make it, but Melvin Gordon, I was like, mm. I know that they love their veteran running backs, and they would love to have a guy like Melvin Gordon, who has been productive throughout his career. Yeah, he had the fumbling issues and whatnot, but for the most part, he's been productive in his career. So I was thinking, ooh, and then to have him versus undrafted, I, I, I just, I don't know, man. And he made it. Keaton Mitchell made it over Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon made the practice squad. Keaton Mitchell made the active roster. So then the Baltimore Ravens put him on injury reserve, and I said, oh, no, are they doing a stash? Are they, are they stashing him or are they going to actually keep him around? But where we had hope at was the fact that they let him make the active roster first and then put him on injury reserve because the way that they did it, it gave him hope in returning sometime later on this season, which is now. So he's back. Now, uh, some, something that we talked about and we've been talking about for when this day would come and now it's here is expectations and Let's try to have realistic expectations with Keaton Mitchell. He going off 12 carries for 150 yards. No, but Keaton Mitchell, um, I would expect him to get some carries. I, I really would uh, because you got Gus Edwards. He going to get his. You got Justice Hill. He going to get his. But we've seen it already. The Baltimore Ravens, those two are going to get their carries. But we've seen Kenyon Drake be involved in the game. We've seen Melvin Gordon get involved in the game. So I would definitely expect Keaton Mitchell to get – a, a few carries here and there because the Baltimore Ravens have done this thing where they share the wealth, where the running backs all get their opportunities at making some plays. So while I, I can't expect him to go off like crazy, I mean, I hope he does when he gets his chance because we see it with Justice Hill. We see it with Justice Hill. Like every game that he plays in, he normally breaks a big play. Justice Hill will cut up a couple times and shake somebody and whatnot and take off. Now, we hope that moving forward, he won't drop the ball anymore. But we hope no Ravens will drop the ball. That's, in, that's Lamar Jackson, <laughs> Justice Hill, just everybody. No more fumbles. No, we don't need no more fumbles at all. But anyway, uh, Keith Mitchell, I think it is realistic to expect him to get maybe like five to seven carries in tomorrow's game. And depending on the conditions of the game, it could possibly be more dependent on if the Ravens are running the ball like that a lot. So we'll see what type of game plan that they have tomorrow against those Titans. Now, it's been said by a lot of Ravens fans, a lot of Ravens media, a lot of Ravens reporters that this is the healthiest that the Baltimore Ravens have been all season. Uh, 52 out of 53 players on the active roster participated in practice in full, in full only person who didn't participate in practice was Adafi away, but he's already been ruled out for this game. But everybody else practiced in full, and that is beautiful to hear. That's wonderful news. I love it. We all love it. But something to keep in mind is that even though 52 out of 53 people on the active roster, they practice in full, Ravens still ain't at full strength yet. Y'all know that, right? Ravens still ain't at full strength yet. Now, with Marcus Williams, we talked about it earlier this week. We felt like he, he's still pretty banged up, like really banged up. And almost felt like maybe he should sit, depending on how he is. But hopefully this week, he'll be a lot healthier. He'll be a lot more. That, that arm won't just be sitting there dangling like it was last week. With Odell Beckham Jr., he's another one. I felt like he just he wasn't himself. He didn't really look good to me. Uh, and then when that, in that fade route versus Joey Porter Jr., <laughs> it was ugly. It was, it was big nasty. Uh, so hopefully he'll be better. He'll be more active. He'll be more loose. Uh, he'll be quicker. He'll just be a lot better. Uh, but... 
we don't even have it. Tyus Bowser. Ty, I, I, I cannot let people forget about Tyus Bowser because he's still around. He, he's still around. He's not on the active roster yet, but he's still around. David Ajabo, they ain't got him right now either. And again, he's on injury reserve too. So he could come back if, if the rehab goes right. I got my doubts on it, but if the rehab goes right, if it goes better than expected with his knee and his ankle issues, then he could be back later on this season too. So while the Baltimore Ravens are as healthy as they've been all year, they still got a lot more people that they could get back. But the fact that this this will be, I thought it was going to be last week, but Morgan Moses tricked me. But this is the week that Lamar Jackson will have his starting offensive line back for the first time all together since week one. Everybody. Ronnie Stanley, John Simpson, Tyler Linderbaum, Kevin Zeitler, and Morgan Moses. Morgan Moses is expected to make his return to the lineup tomorrow morning against the Titans. So that is very much needed. It's very much needed. Even though, even with the starters, the offensive line's still been rough, but it's better to have the starters than the backups because the starters, they they the starters for a reason and they practice together, they gel together, and hopefully they really start clicking. And hopefully this whole offense starts clicking. In my opinion, if the Baltimore Ravens could win tomorrow, and that would be great, and we hope that they win tomorrow, obviously. But in my opinion, for the Baltimore Ravens really to get their confidence back and f for them really to show like, hey, we rolling right now, we, we are really back. For them to show us that they are for real, we need a Dolphins-Broncos type game, and I'm not even joking. The, and I'm not saying that the Baltimore Ravens got to put up 70 points, but this needs to be an absolute massacre. It needs to be a blowout. It needs to be an ugly game from start to finish. Well, ugly for the Titans from start to finish. Ravens, when you look at this game, going into this game, they have n no reason to lose this game. Seriously, man. And that's not on no cocky or arrogant tip or nothing like that. But they have no reason to lose this game. Now, we could have said that about other games too. Against the Steelers, they had no reason to lose. Against the Colts, they didn't have no reason to lose. But we, we see the Ravens with these repeat patterns, these things that they've been doing for years where they be like, you know what? We, we got all the advantage in the world in this game, but for some reason, we're not going to use it. We're going to make silly mistakes. We're going to make silly decisions. And we are going to find a bunch of different ways to lose. Tomorrow, no. Uh-uh. You got no reason to do that, my friends. No reason. This, in my opinion, this should be a blowout. Blowout. Just the same way that y'all got done the last time y'all was in England and in London, that's what needs to happen tomorrow. Because if the Ravens take care of business the right way against the Tennessee Titans, like they should, then they can really get back on track. They're, they'll. This is a huge game. They they went over there early. You ain't go over there early because what they flew over there on Monday. You ain't go over there on Monday just to get whooped. Titans just left on Thursday. So all the talk about preparation and jet lag and this and that. Ah, right, hey, y'all y'all handle stuff a lot differently than y'all did six years ago. Because in 2017 they went over there. On, I think on Thursday, same time the Jaguars went this week. I mean, same time the uh, the Titans went this week. Ravens went over there late in the week, and then they got dogged. It was, what, 44 to 6 or 44 to 7? Something. I think 44 to 6. It was something super, super ugly. It was really, really ugly. But that, in my opinion, is what needs to happen tomorrow to the Titans. The Ravens just need to completely beat the Titans down. And they, they need that for their team. They need that for their fans. They need that because they need a boost of confidence to really believe in themselves. The Baltimore Ravens, a lot of times, when things are going great, things are going great. But the Baltimore Ravens have shown so many times throughout the years that when things fall apart, when things ain't so smooth, sometimes the Ravens, that's when they fall apart mentally. And, and, and they have an extra hard time picking up the pieces. They have an extra hard time recovering when stuff ain't going so smooth. Get that boost of confidence. And this this needs to be the game where you you just take it to the Titans from start to finish because it is well needed. Right now the Ravens are a very shaky team. They sitting at what three and two, and the wins have been against the Texans, a rookie quarterback, the Bengals, a little banged up quarterback, but still the Bengals and them the nice pieces. 
uh, and also against oh the Browns and a fifth round pick rookie quarterback. So your wins are so I mean you can only play who's on your schedule. You cannot control anything else. But your wins have not been the most convincing. But your losses against Gardner Minshew and he ain't bad. He's a really good backup quarterback. He's a solid starter too. And got experience in the league. But that was you, you lost against him in overtime, and, and and then you lost against Kenny Pickett, and his he was having a pretty ugly game throughout. But then in the fourth quarter, the Ravens were like, hey, "Kenny Pickett, hey, it's all yours, baby." So your your wins have been solid, but not the most convincing. Your losses have been extremely questionable and frustrating. So with that, who are you right now? What, what kind of team are you right now? Ravens need to start with the Titans tomorrow. They need to blow out the Titans tomorrow to really start figuring out exactly who they are.